Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and today I have part two of my Winter Soldier build. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I made the harness as well as the belt and the jacket. This whole part of the build was so much fun for me. I got to work with a lot of different techniques and materials. And just the same as part one of this build, all of the patterns as well as the STLs for all the 3D printed parts will be available free for download, which you can find down in the description. So I really, really hope you guys enjoy. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Let's get started. So I'm starting out patterning the jacket here. I really had to decide how screen accurate I wanted the jacket to be and how much I wanted it to reflect my own personality. I've seen a lot of really, really cool cropped versions of the jacket, but I did decide to make it full length. And I also decided to make it a vest rather than with the single sleeve. One, because I already have an undershirt that I'm going to wear, and two, I hate making sleeves with a burning passion. Once I was happy with the draft, I went ahead and cut out all of my pattern pieces from this really nice pleather vinyl. Next, I just assembled the base jacket using a double top stitch seam. And that little bit of shininess you see is actually almond oil. You can use a little bit of oil on top of vinyl-like materials in order to help it go through the sewing machine smoothly. This jacket is going to be three layers in total. Right now I'm making the base layer, but there's also going to be a liner and a detail layer, which we're gonna do in a second. This is the fabric that I'm using for the liner. It's a black cotton poplin and I'm just going to use the exact same pattern pieces that I used for the base. Next, I'm shortening a zipper by removing some of the teeth and then replacing the metal stoppers at the end. Once the zipper is the correct length, I just sewed it into the base jacket. Next, it's time to pattern the detail layer. The detail layer for this jacket is a little bit complicated, so what I'm doing is I'm just filling up my base jacket with polyfill, wrap it in plastic wrap, and then cover it in a layer of duct tape. What this is gonna do is allow me to draw my pattern directly onto the jacket and get a really perfect fit. Once my jacket was all patterned, I cut off the duct tape layer and then cut my pattern pieces out of the same vinyl. And now it's time to create those iconic horizontal panels. What I'm doing is I'm cutting out nine of these pentagon shapes with a half inch seam allowance around each edge. I sewed the seam allowance down over the wrong side. And this is what the panels are going to look like. I then repeated this eight more times for the other panels. I pinned them into place on top of the detail layer and then sewed them down. So now that all three layers were done, it was time to put it all together. First, I laid the liner and the base jacket right sides together and then sewed all along the bottom and top seams. I then could turn the jacket inside out and then finish up all the rest of the edges. Next, I pinned the detail layer into place and then sewed it down. After it was all put together, it was time to finish up the closures for the detail layer. For this, I'm using Velcro. 
The cool thing about this jacket is that the base jacket is actually closed using that metal zipper, but then the detail layer comes over top and hides the zipper from the outside. For all the Velcro, I'm just using simple super glue. Now it's time for some details. For the fake rivets, I'm actually using these paper fasteners that I cut the legs off of and then plasti dipped in black. After those were dry, I went ahead and just glued them down. The only thing left to do is some weathering. Using some black, gray, and brown acrylic paints, I just went ahead and brushed on some wear in places that would naturally get rubbed or touched often. The effect is pretty subtle, but it adds a lot to the overall look of the jacket. And here it is! I love how it came out! Moving on to the harness and the belt now, I started out by 3D modeling all of the hardware in Fusion 360. I then went ahead and printed everything. And then sanded my prints down so they were nice and smooth. Next, I assembled the main buckle of the belt. This buckle is really cool because it's actually a shell that goes over top of another pre-made buckle. This means that the inside is super sturdy and is going to function for a long time, but the outside is totally custom made and you don't have to worry about the flexibility of whatever filament you're printing in. Next, for the back armor piece, I'm using a foam skinned and warbler technique. I started out by cutting my base and detail shapes from some two millimeter high density EVA foam. I glued them together using contact cement. Next, I cut out the same base shape out of some warbler. I heated up the warbler and then pressed it down on top of my base. Using some more heat and a popsicle stick to help me, I got in between all the details. I also folded the excess warbler over the foam layer. And what this is going to do is give the edge a nice clean finish. I then smoothed out any rough spots with my Dremel. And then gave the whole thing a quick sand to get rid of some of that distinctive warbler grain. Next, I gave my hardware as well as the back armor piece a couple coats of black Plasti Dip. Now time to make the actual straps for the harness. For this, I decided to go with some two millimeter EVA foam. I decided not to use pleather vinyl so that it would give a nice contrast with the jacket. In order to texture the foam, I'm using a tin foil technique. I just rolled some tin foil up into a ball, heated up my foam with my heat gun, and then stamped the tin foil down into the foam, making sure to rotate it to get some random patterns. and the result is this super cool aged leather look. Now to add the hardware. After figuring out where to place everything, I glued it down with some more super glue. In case you haven't noticed, I use a lot of super glue in my projects. To add some further details and interesting textures, I'm using some real metal eyelets. The thing I really love about this harness is how many different materials I incorporated and how unique the finished product looks. Next, I'm just going through and weathering all of my straps by dry brushing on a little bit of light gray acrylic paint. In 
In order to prevent the foam straps from pulling or distorting, I'm interfacing the back with some of this stiff vinyl. Now I just glued all of the straps down to the inside of the back armor using some contact cement. And then I'm just adding a little bit of Velcro to the front strap as a closure. And this is how the harness came out. For the belt, I'm using a lot of the same techniques as I used for the harness. Once again, I'm making the main strap out of some 2mm high density EVA foam. After texturing it with the tinfoil technique again, I'm interfacing the back with another strip of stiff vinyl. For the little side pouches, I'm making them out of foam as well. I just cut out my foam pieces and I'm basically going to make a little origami pouch. And for all of the seams, I'm using contact cement again. Overall, I made three of these pouches. I'm gluing them down to the belt using some more contact cement. And I also made these cute little foam rings which are going to hold the grenades, which I'll show you how I made in just a second. I'm also weathering the whole belt using some more light gray acrylic paint. The grenades were designed in Fusion 360 as well and printed out in PLA. After filling and sanding the prints, I just gave it a nice coat of bronze paint. And this is how the belt turned out. I really, really love how it came out. This is probably my favorite part of the costume so far. I love all the little details and all the little pockets. They're so cute. So finally, I got to try everything on that I've made so far, including the arm, jacket, belt, and harness. I am so happy with how this project is coming together. Most of the main pieces are done and I just have some little details to complete. Once again, all of the patterns and STLs can be found down in the description. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video.